Hi guys, this is going to be a two part video series where we will see how to configure Swagger UI and then we will see how to generate client class in Spring Boot dynamically using a Swagger file. Alright, let's get started. So, let me give you an example. Imagine you have a REST API and you have to give API for someone to consume. How would you share the details of this API? Would you explain each and every component of your API? How time consuming would it be? You would be having multiple calls with the consumer to explain him the details of the API. Would you create a Word document of the API specifications? Of course you can do it. But would it help the consumer to pictureize or visualize your API? If they want some specific details about an endpoint, then they would need to go and search the entire document. Again, time spending on these is a problem here. So what if there is a way to give an user interactive UI to the end user, which they can use to understand the complete details about your API. And even they can use it to interact with your API. This is where Swagger comes in. Swagger provides you a specification and a framework for describing REST APIs using a common language that everyone can understand. Even your product owner or your scrum master can use them to understand the details implemented in the API. It offers both human readable and machine readable format for documentation. So human readable is your Swagger UI and machine readable is the JSON or the YAML that gets generated. Let's see how to enable Swagger in a Spring Boot project. All right, so I have created a simple Spring Boot project. Let me quickly open up the bomb.xml. So nothing fancy here. Uh, I've added the starter web uh, dependency and test and Maven plugins here. All right, so in order to use Swagger in your project, right, you have to add two dependencies. One is Spring Fox Swagger 2 and the other is Spring Fox Swagger UI. Add these two dependencies to your, to your pom.xml after which you should be able to use the Swagger components in your project. So what I have done here is like uh, you have a Spring Boot application. So I created a simple uh, employee profile controller which is going to have all the request methods starting from get, put, post, uh, delete and patch. Okay, And I created a employee model object which is going to have ID, name, department and phone number. There's also going to be an error response and I have created a config which doesn't have anything as of now. So now this is a very simple project that I have created. Now let's enable Swagger here. So to enable Swagger, first we added a dependency in the pom.xml. Now what you have to do is like you have to add a Swagger annotation which is enable Swagger 2 to your configuration. And then what you have to do is like you have to create a bean of a docket. Docket bean gives you a convenient way to define your defaults and your configurations for your swagger. So let's do that. So you have some details here. So our documentation is going to be swagger2. So let's select that. And then as I mentioned earlier, it gives you a convenient way to define your swagger configurations and other specifications for your swagger. So you could see here, there's a lot of configurations available for you. So for to keep it very simple, we're not going to look in very detail about this. Let's first use the defaults and then we'll come back to this. All right, so we are done with the configurations. So let's go and run this application and see what is the output that we get. All right, the Tomcat has started. Now let's go and try to hit some endpoints in our employee profile controller. So let's try to, maybe let's hit this endpoint and see. Initial setups are pretty much working fine here. So now, in order to access the Swagger UI, what you have to do is like, it is your host information slash Swagger UI dot HTML. So you could see here, Swagger UI has been enabled and it has loaded for you. Let's quickly take a look at our employee profile controller. So these are the endpoints that has been exposed as part of the employee profile controller. You have put, post, delete, patch, 
and there are a bunch of get methods available. And if you look at the models, you have the employee model here, which is which has the complete details, what are the elements inside the employee model. And then you could have noticed few other things like what exactly is this basic error controller? And what are these error endpoints? Like why is it even coming here? Because we never had this basic error controller. And then in our models, why we are getting model view view objects here? Like these are not even defined in our application. We are not we are not even using it. We are not even exposed this. Like what exactly is this? These are all spring specific things. Like so, how do you think that we can stop these things appearing in our documentation? Because these are giving invalid details or these are giving details that are not available or not used in our API. So for that, let's go to our configuration. We have the Swagger config, right? In our Swagger config, we are not defined anything except enabling the Swagger UI. So let's try to filter out all this unrelevant information from our documentation. How, how do you think we can do that? We can do that by using this API predicate. It gives you an option to filter out elements that are not needed for your Swagger documentation. So let's do that. Remove the APIs that are part of org spring framework.boot. Server is up. Let's go and refresh this. All right. So as you could see here, now the error controller and the model view objects has been removed. Now we have only information that are very specific to our API. But even now, do you think like the all this information can be configured to present it in a better way for an end client? Yes, you can do that. You can configure every information that is displayed here to give a very good documentation which can be used by the consumer almost for everything. All right, let's try to configure a few elements in the Swagger. So to start with, let's try to configure the title, description, version, all these details. So for that, you have to use the API info. Swagger gives you an API info builder, which of course you can use to build everything. So let me give this API is going to be called employee profile API. And then let's see what else. Description is there. This API can be used to get profile level information for an employee. level actions and information for an employee and then what else is there we do also have version details so it's a string so what we do is like we do version 1.0 you do have a bunch of details but for now we'll keep it as this is pretty much enough for us all right so we have created an api info now we have to inject this into the docker so for that let us see if we have one and we do have one all you have to do is like inject this here let's try to refresh this page and now you have all the details all your headings descriptions was changed so now let's try to configure the endpoint detail just like how we did for title description okay we'll try to configure all the details of the endpoints so first what I'm going to do is like I'm going to give details for the model elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a customized name. Like I want to give a detailed information of what exactly this ID is going to be. So for that you can use API model property. So there are a bunch of uh, things available. So you could see here, right? Swagger has exposed all these annotations which you can make use of to define your own documentation at any level. And we have our model defined. So all our 
uh, model has been defined. So now let's go to the controller. So in the controller, let's do one thing. Let's add an API operation annotation and let's see what's there in that. It has everything. So you can even give details about what it will consume, what it will produce, tags, what will be the response object, uh, if there's any authorization available here, all those things. So here, let me do value. It is going to be, maybe I'll give the request mapping itself here. Employee. And then tax, I'll give employee profile controller. All right. So now let's go and configure the same at the method level. So this get mapping is going to fetch a list of employees. So I'll use the same API operation annotation. I'll define the description of this method and I'll also tell this response is going to be an iterable class. I'll do the same for fetch name. So now we have defined all the API uh, descriptions for the method, the controller, the model object. Now let's restart the server and let's go observe in the Swagger UI how these details are getting reflected there. Let me do a refresh. Okay, so the details have been refreshed. And you could see here the employee profile controller that we defined at the controller level is getting reflected here. And then you could see here Earlier, the method names were directly reflecting here. Now, the details description that we gave in the API operation annotation is being reflected here. So let me click on one, maybe fetch all. And there, you could see here, all the details are available here. You might notice here, like even this information is not completely filled. So we have 401, 403, 404, 200, Example value is still empty. So let's try to do one thing. Let's go and add details for these things and let's come back again and see how it is reflecting. I'll take one example, maybe the API operation for fetch all. So for this, right, Swagger gives you an API responses annotation. Here you can define all your response code and the response object for each of those codes. So as you could see here, I have added a response code for 200 success and the response will be an employee class object. 401 unauthorized, the response will be an error response class. Error response class is nothing but an error response that I have defined for my API. So 403 is going to be error response 404. Maybe 404, uh, we'll keep it as empty. Okay. So let's do the same in the error response also. And you can do one more thing. You can even define a model here. Apply model. And let's go to the error response. Get out. Error response model. Let's go restart and then we'll take a look at the Swagger UI. All right, just refreshed. Quickly go to a fetch all. And now, do you see the difference? You have a success and you have defined your model. So now, when a consumer looks at it, he knows like for 200, you'd be giving this model object. For 401, you'd be giving an error response like this. And the same for 403. Let's take a look at our models and you can see here our error response model with the description that you mentioned is available here. The complete details with an example values. So when I was talking about the swagger, I mentioned that how interactive it is. So let's try to do one thing. So what I'm going to do is like I'm going to try it out from here. 
I'm not going to use Postman I'm, or I'm, I'm not going to use it, a browser to try it out. I'm going to use my Swagger UI to try out if my API is working or not. So let's do that. So here I'm going to fetch all. Let me execute. It has executed and you could see here my response body as the response that is written by my API. Now do you see like how it would be really helpful for someone who is consuming a API. They can actually try out all these operations and have a very good understanding and a better understanding about your API before they consume it. Now let's try it out one more example. What I'm going to do is like I'm going to fetch by name. Let me give John here. Executed and the response body. I'll get the details about John. So this is how you actually embed a Swagger UI in a Spring Boot project. And in our next video, we are going to use a Swagger document to generate client stuff inside your Spring Boot project dynamically. Thanks guys and please subscribe for more such videos.